Hi everyone, I'm Rosemary and in today's video I have 70 quick and easy ideas to refresh your home decor with low to no cost. Since I will be renewing, refreshing, repurposing, or recycling items I already have. This is a long form video that I have broken up into three sections. In the first section I will be covering room decor, in the second section wall decor, and in the third section textiles like pillows and curtains. There is a timestamp directory in the description box if you would like to jump around and help you navigate through the sections. I'm going to start with the room decor section, and the first example will be a mantle refresh. But before I begin, I want to go over my method for this low to no cost refresh. Now, this is an easy two-step method, and the first step is to source new decor pieces. But instead of buying new pieces, I'm going to A, shop other rooms in my home, since relocating decor to another space can give it a whole new look. B, shop all of my storage areas like closets, cabinets, and drawers, and the garage and attic for treasures long stored and forgotten. And C, revisit some of those dated or broken items that were destined for the trash or donation box. Then once I have the pieces I want to work with, I'm going to find a way to reuse, repurpose, and or renew the items by A, giving them a new home or use, B, combining with two or more items to make something new, or C, update the color or texture. To break this down, let's start with A from each of the steps and jump back to that mantle refresh. So to source the new decor pieces for my mantle refresh, I shopped other rooms in my home. And what I found may look familiar to you since they are all DIYs from previous videos, including the Pottery Barn dupe vessel and mirror, the Magnolia dupe terrarium, and the Lowe's hack bin and basket. And I will provide links to those videos here and in the description. In addition, I will be using a landscape that my daughter Nikki recently painted, and then a set of oversized candlesticks that I have had for over 20 years now. I usually place those around the firebox, however, a couple of those are going to get a new home on the mantle in the new design. In addition, I have a few accessories that I have also pilfered from other rooms in my home. To begin my new design, I started on the left-hand side of the mantle with two of the candlesticks, then added a pair of pillar candles and finished with some wood beads. Next, I placed the Dollar Dupe mini vessel and filled with greens. Then I anchored the arrangement with Nikki's canvas and layered with the Pottery Barn mirror dupe in the front. To balance the right hand side, I stacked a couple of neutral Dollar Tree books and then added the Magnolia terrarium on top and finished with a votive and a succulent. Lastly, at the bottom, the Bucket DIY got a new life as a planter, and that was balanced by the Open Wire Basket DIY filled with throws. As for the items that were previously on the mantle, I took the tall topiaries with the metal obelisks and separated the two pieces making great decor items for two separate shelves. In regards to the arrangement in the center, I will reuse the florals on another project, but I have some other ideas for the container which I have also had for about 20 years now. But first, let's take another quick look at that low to no cost methods page as we are now transitioning into B, shop storage areas in step one, as well as B, combine two or more items in step two. And then let's take a look at some of those items I found in storage, including some Dollar Tree plant hangers, glass vases and bowls in different sizes, candlesticks, my grandmother's footed server, as well as other pans, baskets, plates, cups, votive holders, jars, greens, boxes, and various odds and ends. So now back to the container that I was using for the mantle floral arrangement. As I mentioned, I had bought this many years ago and I got it from Southern Living at Home. And in addition to the box and the stand that I've been using for the arrangement, the piece also has a lid and votives, which I've had in storage. In that same cabinet, I also had these Dollar Tree white votive holders, which I decided to pair with the lid and stand. Then I grabbed some greens and recycled jars to add to the combo to create a whole new piece. Put them all together and this combo creates a lovely, light and airy decor piece that's not too bulky or cumbersome and perfect for a kitchen island. 
As for the container, I'm going to pair that with a couple of these plant hangers from Dollar Tree. To better fit the container, I'm going to adjust the bottom knot down a few inches on both hangers. Then just add some greens and voila, you have a beautiful new piece. So in addition to the decor combos that we just saw, I wanted to take another look at the tall obelisk topiaries that were previously on the mantle. As we saw, these were actually a decor combo that took this potted topiary bush that I picked up at Big Lots at the end of season clearance for about five bucks. Then I simply added these metal garden obelisks that I had picked up at Aldi also at an end of season clearance. The two together stood about three foot tall and created a wonderful oversized statement piece, perfect for the scale of the space. And for about 12 bucks each, quite the bargain. But some of my favorite decor combos always seem to entail some type of glass container sitting on a base. For example, the wide candlestick from my set paired with a wide cylinder vase creates this fabulous oversized container that easily holds these moss covered branches that I found outside. All the pieces come together quickly and easily to create a dramatic statement piece. This combo also works great on a smaller scale. You can start with a pillar candle holder that either you have on hand or can easily thrift. Then add a Dollar Tree cylinder vase and the pieces come together to create a lovely decor piece with a high-end look. This metal footed fruit bowl also makes a great base. This was my grandmother's and I've also had this for years. I've combined it with this large glass salad serving bowl. The two together with the addition of some vibrant stems creates this stunning wide and low centerpiece for my dining room table. And don't worry, antiques not required. I achieved a similar look by pairing a Dollar Tree cake pan with the container part of a glass canister. And as with all these combos, the two pieces can be glued together and I would definitely use something like E6000 to do so. And then you can see how just by adding the cake pan as a stand, the canister has transformed into an understated but gorgeous piece. I routinely use items of all different sorts to create stands under my decor pieces to help them better fit a space or just elevate them, pun intended, to look like higher end items. Under the vase, an empty spool from a roll of ribbon was given a faux wood finish and helps to bring the vase to just the right height for the space. The coral picture frame is given a boost by a refinished empty candle jar. A low small dish gives the boy vase in this set just the right amount of lift to help keep it proportional with a choice of greenery in the girl vase. The same type of dish was used under one of the candle holders that were previously the same size to add some visual interest. And of course, books always make a great base and offer an excellent option in helping upgrade your decor pieces and help them better fill the space. And then this fabulous marble statue that I have again had for over 20 years gets an upcycle with a wood stand made by two recycled wood lids from a couple of jar candles. So be sure to look around your house to see what types of items you can use to elevate your decor. But now let's continue making new decor items from treasures found in storage. In my cabinets, I found these beautiful tart pans, a pretty ceramic measuring cup, a mortar and pestle, this handsome wood salad bowl, and this gorgeous wicker basket, which is usually stored away and only pulled out for holiday dinners to hold rolls. But now here are the cup and copper pan joined by a cutting board, forming a charming vignette on my kitchen countertop. The wood salad bowl and basket make charming, warm decor pieces on shelves in my family room. I'm just going to have to remember where they are come Thanksgiving. Then the large white tart pan acts as a tray and is holding the mortar and pestle as well as the sweet vase with greens and this delightful copper finished wax melt lamp. Which brings us to the next points on the low to no cost methods page and C revisit dated or broken items in step one and C update color and or texture in step two. Now, if you have been in the stores lately or have been following the trends in magazines or online, you'll know that we are definitely moving away from the cooler grays and silver tones and into the warm and woodsy earth tones. Metal finishes are also warming up away from galvanized and silver finishes towards brush gold, brass, or copper finishes. Now I am feeling the gold tone finishes for other rooms in my house, but in the kitchen, 
it's copper all the way. Now, as you can see, I have many pieces of gray toned metal in my kitchen, but like I mentioned, I really want to go more towards warming up with copper, but instead of getting new copper pieces, I decided to just give these items a facelift. So I've taken my items out back and I'm going to be spraying them with this Krylon Fusion copper paint. And I just covered the parts of the lamp that don't I don't want to get covered with the paint. And I'm also going to be spraying this uh, Easter basket from the Dollar Tree because I wanted to add that somewhere else. And then once the paint was dry, I just wanted to highlight the raised print on the planter a little bit. So I took some black craft paint and my little makeup sponge there, just dabbing it on very lightly with an almost dry sponge so as not to get the paint all over the place. And then after that was dry, I went back with a dry brush, just distressing it ever so slightly. And now you can see the finished projects and how that change of color has really warmed up these two pieces. And then of course the wax melt lamp that we already saw. And then as for the Dollar Tree basket, it is making a wonderful stand for my teapot. But then I couldn't stop there and decided that I also wanted to refinish this metal watering can with the copper paint. It was left outside and was in pretty bad shape, which is why it was slated for the trash bin but I decided to put it in my box of take a second look materials. Okay, so let's have a looky-loo in here. So we have that watering can, and as you can see, it's in pretty rough shape. It's rusting and peeling. And then there's a couple of vanity light covers that I meant to return and never did. And then there's that canister that long ago lost its lid and which I used earlier in the video. And then there is that 1990s urn and that clock that was in someone's dorm room and uh, the trellis that has seen much better days. So for the vanity light covers, I thought it would be fun to make some mod looking candle holders. They already have a cool etched design, but I did want to make them a little more opaque. To preserve the etching, I'm just going to spray along the inside of the cover. Add a couple votives to the top, and as we saw earlier, add that Rabkin dish to the bottom of one to elevate it just slightly, and you have a great set of mod looking candle holders. In another homage to our mix and match combo redo category from earlier, I'm going to take on the clock next. I found the perfect base in this Dollar Tree soap dish, and I'm simply going to spray paint it with the gold paint. Then I use some E6000 glue to attach the two items together. And then that's it, a gorgeous clock on a stand. This has got to be one of my favorite pieces from this series. I just love the clean, modern look, and that gold tone is keeping us right on trend. And speaking of trends, let's keep on the trend of looping back to previous parts of this video and take another look at Nikki's canvas and how we can upgrade it with pieces of the trellis. So to begin, I took four of the pieces that had broken from the bottom of the trellis, and after removing the tacks with some pliers, I cut them down to size, cutting two pieces to the size of the canvas width and two pieces to the size of the canvas length. Next, I'm going to glue the pieces on with my favorite quick and thick tight bond glue that I get at Lowe's, and then clamp them in place using these large chip clips from the Dollar Tree. First, I attached the pieces along the width and then added a large rubber band to help keep them in place while the sides dried. Then I repeated the process for the length. And now we can see the new and improved finished canvas. I think that adding the wood just takes the whole piece up a notch and imparts more of those woodsy and earthy tones. And from being out in the elements, the wood has aged and patinaed perfectly, so no need to faux finish. Thanks, nature. The wood also helps to tie the artwork to the other pieces like the mirror, terrarium, and candlesticks, and even picks up the brown tones in the mini vessel. Now, when I made that Pottery Barn dupe from the Dollar Tree vase in the Dollar Dupe series, I mentioned how the same technique could be applied to any vase, including much larger pieces. So that junk box 1990s vase gives us the perfect opportunity to do that now. Since this vase is a dark green color, I wanted to give it a clean slate, so I'm just going to spray it first with a coat of white spray paint. Once dry, I'm going to paint the vase with my favorite spackle paint, which is simply a mixture of spackle and paint. 
And in this case, it's Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. It is the spackle paint which imparts the faux terracotta finish and turns a vase into a vessel. Since this vase already has a texture, I'm going to go with a little less spackle in this instance. So the ratio here is about two thirds paint to one third spackle. However, without a texture finish, I usually go about a one to one ratio. In addition, you can control the amount of texture by how many coats of paint you apply. In the Pottery Barn video, I applied three kind of thick and gloopy layers, but that was because I was duping an existing piece and was mimicking the finish. But for this one, I'm going to go with just a couple of thin layers. In addition, since I'm not duping here, the technique used for the shadowing and patina will be much easier. Instead of using paint to create the finishes, I'm going to be using just a little diluted coffee with grounds. I'm going to brush the liquid and some of the grounds on with a foam brush in a kind of streaky fashion. Once I've covered a section, I'm going to swirl the coffee around and into the surface with my hands to create all of those wonderful dimensions of color. The grounds help by making small streaks, further helping the design. After finishing the vase with a first coat all the way around, I went back again with a second coat. And you can pretty much just continue to do this process until you build up the colors and dimensions the way you like. Just layering and building up the finish until you achieve the desired effect. And then, yay, a beautiful junk box save. Now, as for that watering can that started us on this junk box journey, at first I thought I wanted to paint it a simple white. And so I taped off the wood handle and painted it with some white spray paint. But that of course was before I was bitten by the copper finish bug. So then this piece also got a shiny new copper finish. And then this is how that turned out. Another beautiful copper piece to add to my collection. Well, I hope you have enjoyed part one of this update your decor using what you have series, focusing on repurposing your current room decor. And like the wonderful Dr. Wayne Dyer always said, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Turns out that's true in life and home decor. Next up is part two, wall decor and we will be using that same low to no cost method for all of the ideas and DIYs. So that means I had some shopping to do in my own home, including other rooms, as well as storage areas like closets and cabinets and in the garage, and then also to revisit those dated and broken items that were slated for the trash or donation. As a matter of fact, let's start there. So taking a deeper dive here, we can see there are some outdated or broken sconces and shelves, and then various other pieces of wall decor that are either outdated, damaged, or no longer go with my color scheme. To these pieces, I want to add some items that I found in other rooms or in cabinets, closets, and drawers. Including this black square mirror purchased several years ago, still with the tags on it. On top of that are two sink mats that never quite made it into the sink. Then a couple of decor items I'm pilfering from other rooms, a couple of medallion pieces that haven't been in use for a while and we're enjoying a vacation in the garage. Then I have this black square Ikea mirror still in the packaging as well. Great look, but not very practical. And then a plethora of unused picture frames that were either extras from a set or changed out for new frames. And virtually every room had at least one stored in a closet or cabinet. As for what to put inside all those frames, there are so many options. I love textured items like rugs and table linens, or even just scrapbook paper in textured finishes. And then fabulous images can be found in calendars, periodicals, and art books to name a few, as well as beautiful prints on tote bags and other graphic pieces. Then I found actual artwork that I purchased from Ikea years ago and just forgot about in my attic. 
Then there's my favorite, children's artwork. And while you're at it, pull out those medals, belt bands, and collectibles, as well as postcards and other trinkets from your travels. Here are some of my daughter's postcards from her many travels and art museum visits. They not only make great small-scale decor pieces, but also serve as a daily reminder of your wonderful trip or visit. I simply selected a couple of those unused 4 by 6 inch frames, and voila, instant decor piece. Now, I want you to just take a look and keep in mind the hockey puck and the baseball on the black stand on the shelf above, while we take a look at our next postcard example. If you recall, the frame used here was a plain box frame with white matting, but in order to improve the proportion of the frame in this arrangement, I added the baseball and hockey puck underneath. The combination also imparts a unique and upscale look to the plain frame. And of course, one of the best ways to obtain height and proportion to your decor items is with coffee table books. I purchased these gorgeous tomes at half price books in the clearance section. I like to remove the paper covers to reveal the beautiful fabric textured hardbacks in fabulous neutral tones. And if the coffee table books you happen to get are art books, you get an added bonus of also getting some great artwork in the pages. In the right frames, these images will definitely be giving off some restoration hardware vibes. So I think it's time to break the little Ikea mirror finally out of its packaging. Now, because of that teeny tiny mirror, this piece was never very practical as a mirror. So I'm going to repurpose it as a frame. I'm going to just cut the glue around the back of the frame and pop the mirror out. And then I took a uh, small architectural print from the coffee table book, and I'm going to just use a glue stick to attach it there to the front of the mirror, and then just pop it back into the frame. And ah, uh, yes, much better. Next, I wanna do the same thing with one of those outdated wall decor items from the donate box. These store-bought pieces usually have a paper type tape on the back that can be easily pulled off. And then the cardboard back is usually attached with some type of nail or staple, which can be pried up with a screwdriver and or a pair of pliers. Then replace the outdated print with a sleek new architectural image for a quick, easy, and inexpensive updated look. And if architectural prints aren't your thing, don't forget there are plenty of artists to choose from, like these stunning impressionist prints of the works of Claude Monet, which can again be used to easily and inexpensively update outdated wall decor. But some of the very best artists and artwork you may find could very well come from your very own mini Monets. Yes, even among the googly-eyed snowmen and construction paper turkeys, you may find some exceptional pieces. Place it in a beautiful frame that you may already have on hand or can be easily thrifted, and the result will be some wall-worthy pieces. And don't stop with the grade school artwork. Don't forget that in high school, they also take art and can create some stunning work. I find that these 16 by 20 poster frames are a great option for framing as the back of the packaging paper can be used as a mat and perfectly fits the sketch pad size used in many of the high school pieces. And while you're rummaging through their rooms, don't forget to pull out some medals or certificates or other frameable mementos, which are much better as wall decor instead of collecting dust in a closet or drawer. Or maybe you have a sports player or fan, in which case a collection of jerseys would make fabulous wall decor. But don't stop with jerseys, album covers, magazines, even cocktail napkins, or collections of movie memorabilia also make great wall decor. For example, my son is an avid Godzilla fan, and in a previous video, I made a display for his movie prints in a dupe of a Pottery Barn frame system made with recycled wood planks. The finished project came out great, and if you'd like to see the full DIY, you can check it out in this video of high-end inspired large wall art, which I will link here and in the description. Also in that video, I did a large wall piece using a woven table runner. 
And as I mentioned previously, I really like using textured fabric like rugs, curtains, and placemats, even clothing, to make framed art pieces. Even scrapbook pages with textured prints make great options. Digging into my box of unused frames, I found a couple of smaller poster frames, but the 11 by 14 perfect for the scrapbook sized paper didn't have the packaging that I wanted to use, but I did have another mat on hand, so I used that. Next, I reassembled the frame and I was good to go. Returning to my box of damaged and dated items, I had this awesome black and white print of the Chrysler building. However, years of hanging in a sunny spot has damaged and discolored the image. But the frame it came in is really nice size and shape and still in great condition. So I've repurposed it with a strip of Dollar Tree bath rug to create a wonderful textured wall hanging. Next, I'd like to revisit that piece from the high-end inspired large wall art video. I loved how it came together, but I always felt like it needed a little something extra. And then I was recently on the Anthropology website when this gold detailing on the frames of some of their artwork caught my eye. And I thought, that's it. That's the little something that the large textured piece needs. Which brings me to the next major category of this Use What You Have series, and that is to update your older decor pieces by refinishing or resurfacing with on-trend colors, materials, and finishes. In part one of the series, I showed you how I'm transitioning away from some of the cool gray and silver tones towards the warmer earthy tones, and how I gave several galvanized pieces in my kitchen a facelift to a rich copper finish. But in this video, I'm going to delve into the brushed gold and antique brass side. However, a word of warning, unlike other finishes like copper, finishes in gold and brass tones can be a little tricky to achieve, especially when what's coming out of the spray can is not the same color gold you have in your head. There is a wide variation in color among the different brands, and here is a sampling. These are battle-worn from my own collection, so please excuse the condition of the cans. First up is Rust-Oleum's Modern Farmhouse Gold Paint, which has a metallic but dull and matte-like finish. Krylon's Brilliant Gold has a more shiny metallic finish, yet still has undertones of warmer, copper-infused shades. The next two cans of rust Metallic Gold Spray Paint are virtually indistinguishable in finish, and differ, in my estimation, only in packaging and pricing, with the first being almost double the price as the second. Both products give a shiny metallic finish, but in my opinion, the finish tends to be overly bright, and in need of some toning down, so as not to look phony and cheap. But it does make a great base to use in combination with other sprays. And lastly, I have this rust in Gilded Brass, which has cooler silvery undertones, and that works great if that's what you're going for, but you would need to use it in combination with other paints and sprays to achieve the type of brass finish popular in today's decor pieces. Let's take a look at some of these paints in action. For the first example, I'll be doing the Anthropology inspired frame upgrade. To do the upcycle, I'll be using these gem stickers from the Dollar Tree, but since they have a garish bright gold finish, I wanted to use the Krylon paint to improve the color. I chose that paint because it has those copper undertones, much like the gold in the Anthropology inspiration piece. Once painted, I cut the stickers into four row strips and then attached them there along the side of the frame, and I did use some additional glue. And then here you can see the original next to the upgraded version. And I think it does give it just that little extra something. And you can also see how it does look similar to the inspiration piece. For the next gold paint example, I'm again going to use the same stickers on a frame combo, this time on the black square mirror that was in the closet. And I'm going to be using these large dot stickers on the frame. And even though white glue is featured here, I did end up using E6000 to attach the stickers. Once the stickers were attached and the mirror was taped and covered, I first used the rust metallic gold spray paint to coat the stickers and frame. And now here you can see what I mean by that brassy kind of fakey finish that the rust metallic gold gives. Having said that, I still really like this paint as a base, used in combination with other paints like the Krylon from the previous example. 
And then what I do to combine the colors is just add the Krylon paint on top in light short sprays, kind of just building up the finish to the color that I want. And now here you can see the light spraying of the Krylon on top of the Rust-Oleum has resulted in a much toned down, slightly dimensional finish. And now on to the silver metal cubes wall art from the donation box. I wanted to refinish the piece in a brushed gold finish. So I again started with that base coat of the Rust-Oleum metallic gold, which does have that kind of gaudy bright gold finish. Then to get the brushed gold metal effect, I did the same short spray application method of a top coat, this time using the Rust-Oleum gilded brass. And then last but not least, we'll be taking a look at how that finish comes out on the Rust-Oleum Farmhouse Gold. And then for an item to refinish, I'm going to go back to that outdated and ready for donation box for this metal candle sconce. But in this case, the scrolling and other details are themselves a little dated. So I do want to give the underlying piece a little bit of a makeover in addition to refinishing the color. So I'm going to use these little building widgets from the Dollar Tree. You get these in the teacher section. And I'm going to use some E6000 glue to attach those around the scrolls and in uh, the little circles around the sconce. And now here we can see the finish that the Rust-Oleum Farmhouse Gold gives. And since I'm getting a Peruvian art vibe from this piece, I'm going to go ahead and accent with some of this folk art metallic in antique copper to further develop that look. I like to use this paint because it is rather sheer and if you want it to be a little more sheer, you could always add some glaze to the paint. After finishing the accent paint, I decided that I wanted to go back and add these Dollar Tree stickers, but that means I'm going to have to paint and re-accent the piece. So this step should be done prior to the painting. Now I just put these stickers on all willy nilly, but I did want to show you that if you did want to do something like this with a better gemstone, it would look really nice too. And now here you can see the refinished sconce with the gemstones. And now here is another look at the original. Since I already had my metallic craft paints out, I decided to use the gold one on these gray frames that I want to refinish. The IKEA prints that have been hiding in my attic for years will make an excellent addition to the frames. And I just brushed this on with a paintbrush and you can see how it gives a great finish and really enables that wood grain to come out. Then it was just a matter of adding the pictures and I got some great new art pieces. Now, enough with all this gold tone refinishing. How about giving this little wood shelf a faux rattan resurfacing by painting the base in a light color, then wrapping the metal with pieces from this Dollar Tree hula skirt. And now here you can see the painted and wrapped base. So I do have one side there that is just painted, but on the other two sides, I have wrapped those already with the hula skirt. And how I did that was to add some glue there to the metal base. And then I took a strand of the hula skirt and simply began wrapping it around uh, that whole section there. And um, I did do this twice. So I did the whole section, each one of the sections. Then I went back and did a second wrapping on top of the first wrapping to make it a little thicker all the way around. And then to enhance the color and make it look a little bit more like rattan, I used some of this caramel craft paint that I diluted slightly with water and I'm just kind of creating a little stain and then I'm going to uh, paint it on and then use my fingers to kind of just rub it into all the little nooks and crannies on the um, hula skirt wrap so that it then gives that natural look of rattan. And then this is what it looks like when it's all finished. And you can see how this method does give a pretty close faux rattan look. And then I just reattached the wood shelf to the base and I got a whole new look. I did another neutral toned resurfacing with this combination of the Family Rules wall hanging from my donate box along with the sink mats from under my sink. 
I wanted to warm up the sink mats by painting them an ivory instead of that stark white and then use some Waverly chalk paint in the color cashew to paint the sign. I will be using E6000 glue to attach the sink mats to the sign and I did cut down the sink mats to fit properly inside the sign. Now, before I show you the finished project, I did want to point out that in addition to being an example of the refinish category of this repurpose what you have series, it is also an example of the combining items to create new decor pieces category of this series. So be on the lookout for your own combo options as you reassess your own items. And here's a look at the finished project and I'm just loving how this came out. It reminds me of those beautiful rice paper wall art pieces that they sell at World Market. And I have been in love with those for years, but my version only cost the price of paint and glue. And now here are a few more combo examples, starting with these medallions, which I'm going to pair with a couple of the dated wall decor items from my donation box. I've been noticing in stores like Kirkland's and Restoration Hardware that they are putting medallion pieces inside of frames. At Kirkland's, they have several pieces where the background has a textured surface. So to change the blue background of this wall hanging, instead of painting it, I'm going to use a square from this Dollar Tree rug. For the larger piece, I'll be using this framed artwork that was part of the set previously used in this video. I will remove the frame and the mat and then flip the print to the back side to get a nice smooth surface. For this background, I'll be using a piece of textured scrapbook paper. After cutting a piece of the rug sized to the back of the frame, I used E6000 glue to attach the rug to the background. I needed to use a heavy duty glue, otherwise the weight of the medallion will pull the rug right from the surface. Once the glue was set, I then used hot glue to attach the medallion to the rug. To adhere the scrapbook paper to the back of the frame, I used a thin and even coat of Mod Podge. If you've watched my channel in the past, you know my foolproof method for Mod Podge is simply to add that thin and even layer. And as you are getting that thin and even layer, the Mod Podge is actually drying slightly. And even once I have that coat applied, I'll wave it around a little just to make sure it's not too wet. Then it's ready for the paper and the result is always wrinkle and bubble free. Next, I reassembled the frame without the glass and then it was just a matter of gluing the medallion there to the front and I did use E6000 glue for that. Going back to my box of broken items, this wall sconce had a glass cylinder inside the holder on the bottom. Unfortunately, that got knocked over and broken, but this is still a great piece. And just by searching around the house, I found several new combination options. And now last but not least, we have to have at least one example in this video from the last category in this update your decor using what you have series. And that is to give old decor pieces a new location or use. And in this case, that is this metal and wood planter from a previous DIY, which was previously on my porch, but recently I decided to repurpose it as bathroom wall decor. This is the simplest way to get more mileage out of your current decor pieces. And it's definitely one of my favorites. Well, I hope you have enjoyed part two of this update your decor using what you have series. And like I recently saw on a sign, repurposing, reusing, and recycling turns things into other things, which is kind of like magic. So why not do something magical today? And now it's time for part three, textiles, where I will be refreshing, repurposing, and recycling items like pillows, curtains, and blankets using that same low to no cost method, which also means shopping other rooms in my home, shopping closets, cabinets, and other storage areas, and revisiting those dated and broken items slated for yard sale, donation, or trash. These pillows from various rooms can use a refresh, while these attractive throws need to be freed from storage. And these dated tops can be used to transform curtains and pillows giving a custom high-end look. 
As noted for the room and wall decor in parts one and two of this series, the trend is shifting away from the cooler gray and silvery tones and towards the warmer, woodsy, and more golden tones. And the same shift in colors is definitely being seen in textile decor like curtains and pillows. In addition, texture along with fringe and tassels, although popular for years now, is coming even further into bloom and really taking center stage. Up first is this beautiful golden brown curtain that I purchased a while back on clearance. Unfortunately, they were too short for the room I wanted to place them in. But then I remembered that I had another curtain in complementary colors with a block pattern that I had purchased for my son's room, but then didn't end up using. So I decided to use the block pattern curtain to lengthen and accent the curtain that was too short. To join the two pieces together, I'll be using Stitch Witchery, which is an iron-on fabric fuser. You can get this just about anywhere like Walmart, Target, Amazon, and the craft stores in a variety of brand names. To begin, I cut an 8 inch high piece from the bottom of the block pattern curtain and laid it on a long flat surface with the cut edge on top. Next, I took a strip of the stitch witchery and laid it on top of the cut strip, then laid the bottom of the golden brown curtain on top, making sure to line up the two pieces evenly. To fuse, I placed a damp cloth on top, then pressed down with a hot iron set on high for 30 seconds. Then repeated the process all along the hemline until complete. And as you can see, the fusing tape creates a nice and strong bond and gives a beautiful finished result. Not only bringing the curtains to the appropriate length for the window, but also giving them a high-end luxe look. Another great option for refreshing curtains would be to add embellishments like this white tassel fringe, which can be added to either the top or the bottom, and either one would give a fabulous effect. If you recall, I had this white poncho top with the fringe trim in my donate box. The tassels were a little tangled, but nothing that a good brushing through couldn't fix. Then I just cut the fringe from the bottom of the poncho and laid it flat across the top of a plain white curtain that I had. I again used the iron on stitch witchery to fuse the fringe trim to the curtain. And then there you have it, another quick and easy update using items that you already have. But curtains are just the start. The folks at the popular brand Serena and Lily have used tassel fringe to embellish shower curtains, towels, pillows, shams, and bedspreads with awesome results. And if you do it yourself, you can save quite a bit. And don't worry, if you don't have any old fringe ponchos hanging around, you can always pick up some really well-priced fringe trim at about 50 cents a yard from Amazon. I have not used these myself, but they do seem to have good reviews. Another great combination to refresh your current curtains or drapes would be to mix and match them with other items like greenery and metals. Here I've paired some cafe length curtains with a wreath hanging from a second black metal rod to create a modern whimsical balance. Next up, I had these green velvet drapes. Okay, Scarlett, that's enough. Moving on. <laughs> a few months back, I put the old stitch witchery to work to create some no-sew pillow hacks from the Dollar Tree with items such as placemats, dish towels, bath rugs, tote bags, bandanas, and more. But in today's video, I will be looking at updating and upcycling several pillows that I already have. First up is this plain ivory colored pillow in the back. I wanted to liven it up a little by adding some of this wide striped ribbon, as well as one or more of these adorable embellishments that I had on hand, including these pretty crochet rosettes that I picked up at Dollar Tree, believe it or not, and then also several oversized buttons in different colors. First, I decided how I wanted to lay the ribbon on the pillow, and then I took a couple strips of the Stitch Witch and laid it out in that area, and then proceeded with the damp cloth and hot iron. And then once that first strip of ribbon was attached all the way across, I applied some regular Elmer's glue to the edges of the ribbon with a paintbrush. This is to keep the edges from fraying and I will go back and trim when dry. I then added a second piece of ribbon in a cross pattern perpendicular to the first. And then for the embellishments, I first went with trying the black buttons, didn't like those too much, and then tried that black crocheted rosette and that one did the trick. Next up is this brown square pillow that was part of a bed in the bag set. 
I thought it might be a good idea to add a little texture with one of these Dollar Tree throw rugs. I really like that plain beige one, and I think you can get great texture pieces from either the front or the back. So I decided to do two thicker strips on the shaggy side and then cut thinner strips to alternate in between. To attach the strips, I will be using some hot glue, which I found works great with these high texture materials. After all the strips were attached, I decided to use some Dollar Tree nautical rope to go around the edges. And I again used some hot glue to attach. Next up is this blessed pillow, which I actually love, but unfortunately it kind of clashes with the chair that I use it on. So what I decided to do was pick up these pillow covers from Amazon. They have a zipper closure, come in all different colors, shapes, and sizes, and most are very reasonably priced. This one here came as a set of two for just $10.99. And then all you need to do is stuff your old pillow in and zip it up, preserving your original pillow for when you might want to use it again. And there are oh so many pillow covers to choose from. I recently bought several of these to update my living room space, again simply covering older pillows to get a whole new look. Now, although they do have pillow sweater covers on Amazon, they were a little on the pricey side, upwards of about $17 each. So I decided to go ahead and make my own. I decided to use this shoulderless cable knit turtleneck sweater, which at the time seemed like a good idea, but in practical use, if it's cold enough to wear a turtleneck, you're usually not jumping, pulling out that shoulderless one. So it never did get uh, much use, and I think it will have a much fuller life as a sweater pillow. To start, I laid the sweater out on a flat surface, making sure it was even and cut right under the arms. Next, I turned it inside out, again smoothing it out on a flat surface, making sure the sides were even. From here, I'm again going to use the Stitch Witchery Fusion Tape to join the cut end together. And then here you can see how the Stitch Witchery does a really nice job mending those two sides together, even on this heavy sweater fabric. And from this point, I do have a couple of options. I could continue to keep the sweater inside out and just uh, do the Stitch Witchery again, but leave a little gap there to stuff and then either um, hand sew or do also, I can still do it with the Stitch Witchery as well there on the end where I was stuffing. But I'm gonna go ahead and flip this inside out or back, the right side back actually. And um, I'm going to keep, I like the way the ribbing is there at the bottom. So I wanna kind of keep that as intact as possible. And so I'm going to do the Stitch Witchery with the sweater turned back outside again and just go ahead and keep as much of that preserved as possible. But before I fused the two sides together, I took an older bed pillow that I had on hand and used that for the stuffing. I decided to go this route instead of just plain stuffing because I needed the liner of the bed pillow since you can see through the knit weave of the sweater. As mentioned in the Dollar Tree No Sew Pillow video, I prefer to use a hair straightening iron as opposed to a regular clothes iron when doing this type of seal. And as you can see, it creates just as good a bond as the regular iron. However, I did not show here that you do still need to use the uh, wet cloth or the damp cloth to get the best result. And then here you can see the finished project. I'm not so sure I would finish this the same way again. Uh, the thicker material did create a little ruffling that I'm not exactly fond of, but I still think it came out pretty well. Probably would hand stitch the next time.
So now let's get back to those cabinets and closets and to throw blankets, which are such a great way to add color and texture to your decor, but more often than not, we have them stuffed away in closets, cabinets, or storage. So let's pull them out and get busy. As we've already seen, throw blankets are a great way to add color and texture just by throwing them over a sofa or chair. And not only can they be used to accent the furniture, but they can also be useful in bringing together colors for pillows, ottomans, rugs, and other decor pieces. Another great option would be to use a wood ladder to display your throws. I made this quick and easy DIY version in a previous video, which I will link here and in the description. Using a ladder display not only keeps your throws organized and tidy, but will also create a beautiful decor piece in its own right, bringing color, texture, and height to the space. Another great option to bring those throws into the limelight would be to place them in a large open weave type basket that you may already have. The one shown here is from a previous DIY, which I will link here and in the description. However, in the spirit of updates, this DIY has been slightly augmented since publication of the original one, and I will show you those updates at the end of this video if you're interested. The large open weave of the basket allows for the color and texture of the throws to poke through bringing warmth, color, and coziness to the space. In the same previous video, I also created this bucket basket, which has also been slightly augmented since publication, and I will also include those changes at the end of this video. But buckets or baskets like these also make great options for open display storage of your throws and pillows. And now for those updates. When I originally made this basket in the Home Depot Hacks number no. 3 video, I only used two tomato cages to form the body of the basket before inserting them into the base and wrapping with rope to form the rim. But it always felt a little flimsy and not anything that a few more tomato cages couldn't fix, but I really didn't want to unwrap all the rope and start the process all over, so I just added two additional cages to the existing basket and because of the tight fit, the tension has held the baskets together quite well. However, doing this from scratch, I definitely would have used four cages from the jump and properly secured them with the wrap rope. As for the bucket basket, the original had a matte black finish at the top of the bucket, but I decided I wanted to warm it up a little and give it more of a distressed wood finish. To achieve the look, I used brown chalk paint on a dry brush to create the faux look. Well, I hope you have enjoyed part three of this Refresh Your Decor series focusing on curtains, pillows, and other textiles. And I hope all three parts have inspired you to find ways to breathe new life into your old decor. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to give a big thumbs up and please share with any family or friends you think may also enjoy the video. Also, please leave me a comment to let me know which one was your favorite or if you plan on doing any of these ideas. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on Fab Tax, where we're putting the extra and ordinary one DIY at a time.